Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel and here I am with another video. This is the video, I think in number seven or number six related to this uh, 1964 wagon. And something that I will show you on this video, how you can uh, make the back seat cover. Uh, I just will give you an idea. I'm not going to show you the whole process, but I will give you an idea how you can approach this kind of job. Um, let me be uh, clear if you don't have experience doing this kind of job or doing this kind of seat it might be hard for you but um, the purpose of my video it is to give you an idea make your life easier especially if you are learning this kind of trade for those who are an expert on this trade so thank you so much my friend for being here and let's get started that is how i received this uh ford wagon and there is the back seat i put burlap like I say, I'm not going to show you the whole process. Uh, I prepare the back seat. I put phone on it. I design. I have some video related to how you can uh, phone me, how you can put phone on the seat. That is the design. So, and then I'm just going to show you how I cut this piece. This is just for the template. I put glue. Some people put a post pin just to hold that piece in place. Why? Because, because you're going to trace it. And based on that one, you're going to cut the leather of fabric or vinyl. See, I just put glue, I just stretch it and put a mark following the line that is underneath. Same thing right here, you see, I lift and I see where the line it is. Then I draw on top of the line that is under. And I will do that with all the other pieces. Same thing, same thing. You cut the vinyl fabric, uh, some left over, you put them on top and you start drawing, copying that design. When you're done cutting, uh, drawing all those pieces, you will take it to the a table and put the letter and then on, put the letter and then on top of that you will put you will put those a uh, uh, pattern. If you do this, this will, this will help you to save a lot of material, especially when the material is expensive. The material that I will use or I am using for this project, it is from Relicate and that's kind of expensive material. And you don't want to waste it when it's expensive. So uh, I just cut it and you see, I am giving the extra for the seam allowance already. Cut the extra. And then I just put them on there and you can see it. And I did that with all the rest of the pieces. I cut that center piece. See, all those pieces are there. So I just start removing one by one. You can see it. I get extra for the seam allowance. I just remove this one. And same thing with this one. And right here, I will show you. You see, this is the uh, side panel. And this is the one where you see me tracing. This is the uh, cheat board that I make a pattern for that one. I already have one pleats. And I will show you how I made that pleats. This uh, pleats, it has to have two inches when it's done but the stitch will be underneath. So how do you do that? First, you get a piece of foam. The foam that I will use is a half inch uh, thickness. And then I put a mark two inch away from each other. This uh, piece, it has to be done at two inch width. And I am drawing those lines two inch separate. And there it is. So because the stitch will be underneath, Look, it had two inches. And you're going to grow a quarter of an inch on its side. So you have to give more than two inches on this piece of leather. So how much will be that? Will be two inch and a half. Because you're going to take a quarter of an inch on one side and a quarter of an inch on the other side. But that please, that's half inch. So keep on mind that. Those one are two inch and a half. This is, uh, this is normal. 
Sometimes it is more when the font it is more than half inch. You can see him on there. So right here, I draw a line on that leather and I fold the material exactly on that line. And then I put the line of the leather exactly where the line, that black line on the font it is. Simple. And I keep sewing it straight. Sometimes you have to put font just to hold the material. And sometimes it is not necessary. All depends how big it is the piece. And I cut it and I keep doing it the same thing. And you can see it clearly in there. Fold it where the line it is. Then sewing. Don't pull it. It is not necessary. Just hold it and sewing. Simple as that. You saw me putting two stitch. I am not going to show you the whole process. I am just give you an idea. I think I have some video that where I explain it, uh, this process. So I put all those stitches already. Then I put a stitch on the other end and like that. And then you can see it. It is done. So after I done, I take it to the table and put the pattern on top and use a silver ink marker, especially for leather or in vinyl, put them on top and draw a line. Then there it is. And same thing with the other one. I will do the same thing with the backrest. I am not going to show you the backrest, but I am giving you an idea right here. My friend, those pieces that I, that I just see in there are for the backrest. You saw me cutting the bottom cushion, right? But you didn't saw me uh, tracing the backrest. So those ones are for the backrest. I did the same thing with the bottom cushion. I bring the uh, insert or the please to that uh, sewing machine and start sewing. And you can see I am sewing half inch away from that uh, mark. And I cut it exactly giving half inch for the seam allowance. So then I will start sewing all those pieces. All the face or the seat will have a half inch thickness font. All the face. That piece will have a half inch thickness. All the rest of the seat will have a quarter of an inch font. And I put a stitch all around. I recommend you to do this. Put a stitch all around. And make sure, you see I put some mark in there, make sure when you are sewing those pieces, those mark match each other. See? Not a big deal, right? Sewing and sewing and sewing all those pieces that are going to be on top. After you're done sewing, uh, putting the stitch around, you will have to uh, start sewing those pieces together. I start with the center piece. You see, I am following those notches. Very important to match each other. Very, very important. Here I got the first, then I go with the second one. Just stop uh, right there where the market is and keep sewing. And there I have the insert. So after that, I will start sewing the center pieces or the seat. And the same thing. You get one piece and make sure to uh, uh, those uh, notches match. I made that stitch a little bit smaller right here. And there it is. I will put a French stitch in there. I am not going to show you the whole process how you can put a French stitch, but I will give you an idea later on this video. So I got those center pieces. And this is the, the outside with the third panel. Same thing. Just follow those mark, make sure match, and keep sewing. I got that one. I will take it to the double uh, needle sewing machine. I just need to sew in this one. Not a big deal right here. So then I bring these uh, pieces to the double needle machine. I am using the 
uh, navy blue uh, 210 thread this machine it is awesome for this kind of job see just have to have that absolutely control don't let the machine control you you have to control the sewing machine you see it's a post machine nc post machine especially for this kind of job i done with those uh, frame stitch then i bring it to the uh, regular sewing machine and i saw the piece that is going to be on the uh, center front And I got this piece. And I will put a, a, a white listing in there for the center pull, for pulling. And same thing right here. Put the white listing for the pull. And there it is. I got the center with the insert. Then I go into so the side panel. I am putting a a listing where the pleats and the uh, plain piece meet because I will pull it and you will see when I am installing the cover. The purpose of that white material in there. So I got the, the face with the side panel, then I have to put a, a tail. And this will be right there. I make a pattern for this too. For everything I make a pattern because I don't want to waste this material. Always, always when you are using an expensive material when you think you don't have enough or you don't want to waste it, make a pattern. That way we uh, will save ma uh, material. So this is a ready made uh, welcor. Sometimes, once in a while for that cheapy, cheapy job, I use a ready made welcor. Sometimes, not all the time. I prefer making it a vinyl. So why do, uh, I am putting this uh, welcor in there? If it is a job, it is a premium or expensive. Well, because it's just to reinforce that part of the cover. I will put some. Uh, it's like a reinforce for the uh, when I attach that cover to the um, seat frame. And I keep sewing that uh, ready-made welcor all around. All around. And you can see him on there. I will put a hand ring in that welcor. And that hand ring will grab the cover and will grab the metal. I cut it right here. That is the corner of the front seat look i live like three inch away without uh, a band uh, welcor and i done i just have to put them on the back and keep doing it And there it is. This cover, it is almost, almost done. So it's done. I'm going to take it to the table. And sometimes I put glue in all that uh, where those uh, plates are located. But on this time, I only will put glue around the stitch. Like one and a half inch in on that stitch. And you can see them on there. But I am putting a lot of glue. 
a lot. And I will let it dry at least four minutes. Then I will activate that glue with the hot uh, air. Same thing right here. I put a lot of glue. See? A lot. Sometimes I use a brush to apply glue by, by hand in that area. So I got to see that hole on there on the phone. The white material will be in the in there. So I get that cover. I will use this uh, um, heat gun to activate that glue. So I just get a, a staple puller, put that material through that hole. And make sure, my friend, make sure all those stitches match with those uh, black lane on the phone. Make sure. In case if it doesn't match those stitches with that uh, line, maybe when you put the backrest and the uh, bottom cushion together, those lines are not going to match. So make sure to uh, put them exactly. The stitch will be exactly on top of those black line. I get the cover and I'm making sure if you have to pull a little bit, I will right here. I am making sure match those stitches. Take your time right here. One little mistake will, uh, will uh, see a big difference. You might think, well, maybe I cut it wrong. I saw it wrong. Even if you cut it uh, right and you saw it right, but if you're not styling right, um, you might think you made a big mistake cutting or sewing when the problem might be right here. So take your time right here. You see, I used a, a, a heat gun to activate that glue on that area. When I am 100% sure that that stitch is exactly on top of the mark, I just create pressure. Same thing right here. I put a hot air in there, activate that glue, then I see it where the stitch it is, and making sure to put them exactly on top of that line. Then I put my hand on top, rub and making sure. This, it is very, very important. And same thing on the other side, same thing. Right here, it's not necessary to put the video on the slow. I just put it faster because you already saw me uh, doing one side. So same thing. I activate the glue. If it has to put more glue, I will. I see everything underneath, making sure those line matches. Put hot uh, air, put my hand on top, play with it a little bit. And then when I am I, 100% sure that cover is placing right on that area, I put the front part. See? The secret right here, it is putting a lot of glue. Because if you don't put enough glue, that will come undone later. Believe me, it will come undone, that glue. I pull it, and that uh, cover is look beautiful in there. You can see it with your own eyes. So I just put a phone on the table. Why? Because I want to make sure don't scratch that cover. Even the table is clean, but I want to sure because I'm going to create pressure. I want to scratch that leather, and I start pulling that white lifting and hold the width 
some hand ring. You can buy the hand ring and the hand ring plier. Amazon, there are a lot of places in the United States where you can buy it. I got that side, I got the other side. So then I am going to use a pneumatic uh, a hand ring plier. I just pull it and hold that cover with the hand ring plier. And I will do that all around this uh, bottom cushion, all around. See, I get the hand ring plier, put a hand ring in there. So simple, huh? Uh, I remember this hand ring, I have a long, long time with this pneumatic hand ring plier. Taking more than 10 years. And it's still working like a king. And I bought a mighty, mighty or mighty, different style of hand ring plier, and I don't like it. I pay uh, less money than this, than this one, and it start uh, failing already. And this new one than this one. See how you're holding that cover? And look at that corner right there. I don't know if you remember when I uh, saw in the ready made welcor. I live like three inches with a welcor in there. Well, because it is that corner. And same thing. I keep putting that cover, holding with a hand ring. If you don't have a pneumatic hand ring play, well, you can do it by hand. It's not a big deal. Tool is just make you efficient. That's all. Tool will make you efficient. I don't my I don't mind spending money on tool because at the end of the year I will make that whatever I pay for that tool deductible from the taxes. So I got this cover already. You saw me cutting one piece or a pattern. You saw me cutting some pieces of leather, sewing. And here it is. I will do the same thing with the backrest, but I'm not going to show you the whole process. I have a lot of videos related to that process on my channel. So I think it is not necessary to show you, but I will give you an idea because uh, this backrest is a little bit different than the other, the, the other one that I have on my channel. So I make a pattern. I transform that pattern to that leather in there and there is those pieces. I prepare the phone. This is just was a frame with a, a borla with a phone. And to be honest, the hardest thing of this it is to prepare. Get the design what the customer want. The rest, tracing, cutting, and sewing, that is a piece of cake. Same thing. I, this is the piece for that backrest I showed you before. And right here, I am going to use a half inch thickness phone for the entire face of this backrest. Just gluing those pieces to that phone, put them on top. Same thing with the other side. There are left and right side. And then I cut it around the phone. I am not giving extra. Some people just cut it with extra, then they take it to the sewing machine and they put the stitch all around, then they cut it. I put a little bit of glue, cut it exactly, then I take it to the machine and doing exactly what I did in the bottom cushion, putting a stitch all around those pieces. And you can see them on there clearly. Always when the material is stretched a lot or when you are as putting a a half inch as a pattern, uh, I recommend you to put that stitch all around. And quarter of an inch phone, that is uh, uh, all depend. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't do it, but most of the time I don't put a stitch all around. So you can see it right there, I got all those pieces. This go right there, I make a pattern. I didn't show you all that process on this seat because it is time. But I have some other project, some other seat 
where I show you all that process, how you can make a pattern. And then after that, uh, cut the material basis on that pattern. Right here, I am putting all those pieces together. This is like a puzzle. This backrest have a lot of pieces. If you think you are going to confuse this when you are going to sew those pieces and you won't remember which one go with which one, so I recommend you to put a number, put a mark that uh, you will know it, which one go with uh, which one. And I am sewing all those pieces together. I always start with the center. That is the center. Then the piece is going to be next to the center piece. And I had those one. Then after that, I will sew that. Instead, I will put a French stitch in there. I am not going to show you how to put a French stitch because on the bottom cushion, I show you one. And this almost is the same. Except it is a different piece. But the French stitch will be the same frame stitch. So I put the insert in there. I put the white lifting for uh, pollen. And same thing with the other side. Then I got the piece, and then I do the outside. On the outside piece, on the bottom cushion, I put a frame stitch. On this one, I am not going to put a frame stitch. And you might ask, why? It's not going to match. It should have a frame stitch. Yes, it should have. But on this one, will will be a crumb on top of that stitch. So it doesn't make sense to put a frame stitch if it won't show. So that's why I, this one will have a simple stitch in there. And I put that stitch in there. And then after this stitch, I will put a, uh, I will sew that tail on the bottom. But it's simple. Just get a piece of material, put them on there. I'm not going to show you. It's so simple. So do you remember? Do you remember on the front seat, on the bottom seat, I put like a, a ready-made welcome for the holding with the hand ring. On this one, I didn't put nothing, and you can see him on there. You might ask him why, because I will glue it this one. So same thing. I put a lot of glue on the insert. I put the material for the uh, that while lifting through that hole. And then I make sure to uh, use the heat gun, make sure those lines those line match each other with the stitch. And this is time, make sure to do it right, my friend, because any any uh, little mistake right here will be so notable to see from far away. So you can see him on there and taking my time, make it right. And same thing right here, I will put a glue in there because all those pieces will be will be with glue. On the back of this backrest, I will make a board. I will wrap that board with a leather, and it's simple compared to the rest of this job. I'm making sure everything go according to how I figure out. There it is. There is a frame stitch. I don't know if you can see it. So everything is fine. So then I pull out those pieces and put glue in there because a uh, crown grill will be in there with the speaker and right here this is very important I weld a metal all around that is under that stitch then I put a phone in there and then this chrome will be in there that chrome have like four uh, tiny screw and then uh, underneath the cover there are some holes where I will screw that chrome so then I just pull it making sure that pull it has to be even um, a board will be covered all those things a nice board then I just get this and pull it and make a knot in there
and you can see how that frame with phone is turned on so beautiful. I make a lot of work on that frame, cutting, welding, cutting, welding, adding pieces of metal, painting, grinding a lot to make it look like like that. There is the chrome grill, grill, and then there will be a speaker. As you can see, how beautiful it is. There it is, my friend. I didn't show you the whole process, but you can see the finishes in there. I had to work on the back. It's not done yet. Uh, I will put them on the sun for a little while, and you can see that chrome grill. So beautiful. Make it look nice. It goes with some watches underneath and a small screw. It's a pain on the butt eh, to put that chrome in there because it's not as, not the space when you can put a ratchet when you can put your screw gun and tiny nice. No, it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of challenge, but you can see it at the end. It worth it. And there is both pieces together. It has to line up. No matter what those stitches, those lines, it has to match up. In case if it doesn't match up by a half inch, you are in trouble. By a quarter of an inch, you are in trouble. So make sure to take your time and make a match. You can see him on there. I had to put him on the car. Uh, everything I figure out inside the car, I draw those lines inside because that way is not way how you can fail. There it is. So beautiful, huh? Really kind leather. You saw how you, how this thing was framed. Uh, I put a lot of work on that frame, cutting, welding, sanding, uh, putting some nut, some bolts, and to make it look like that. Some customer they just say, "Oh, do whatever you have to do. Don't explain me what you're going to do." I just want to see this thing nice. I just want to see this thing perfect. And then at the end, you just give me the bill. I love this those kind of customer. I love it. Why? Because they have a beautiful car and they don't hesitate to pay. The weird thing is when the customer have a so beautiful car with a so expensive paint and expensive engine and they don't want to pay on the interior. They don't want to waste... Uh, I put some money on the interior. That's weird. I, I don't get that part. If they have been investing a lot of money inside, outside the car, in the engine, why not investing a lot of money on the, in the interior? Some customers are like that. They look for the cheapy material, cheapy design on an expensive car. It doesn't make sense, but if you have been working on this trade for a long time ago, you know there are a lot of customers like that. And there is that. I already made the carpet. The carpet is kind of hard to work with it. But there it is. I installed the seat belt. Uh, I didn't show you that part. But I, I think I have some video how you can install a seat belt. I think I have. I'm pretty sure I have it. And I had to work on the front door panel. I had to work on the center console. And... Still more video to come, my friend. Still more video to come to this project. Still more video to come on the 1937 hot rock. And there is the back section. I have to clean it, but you can see it. It's had the carpet. I put some chipboard underneath the carpet. I put a banding all around. Uh, I showed you how you can band in, how you can put a nice banding. There is the back uh, chair or the backboard or the, on the backrest. It's so beautiful. It's on two pieces. It's impossible to make it on one piece because the shape that it have, that's what I make it on, on two pieces. But it look nice. It look beautiful. It look beautiful. The center console, I had to make a lot, of, a lot of adjustment. And there it is. If it's uh, that right now, that's why you can see that color. At the end, I will put a steamer because I can 
I don't know if you notice a son is more ring on the driver uh, side bottom cushion, but that's not a big deal. The steamy will make that the uh, wrinkle come out. A hundred percent sure. So that is nothing. I'm not worried about that thing. And there is the back seat. In the day, the color look different. Look like a little more darker, darker than this. I understand right now I am holding the camera and I am holding a flashlight. I'm holding a light. That's what it look like that. So my friend, on this video, I just give you a basic idea how you can reupholster a uh, uh, back seat from the 1960 Ford Ranch uh, uh, wagon. Uh, so stay tuned for more videos. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do it, my friend. I bet you, I bet you, you will learn a lot about upholstery. In case if you are not working on this kind of trade, but you love you love watching how uh, uh, the in car interior come and done, well, you are in the right place. So make sure to subscribe, and I see you soon on the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video, my friend.